asked if you wanted to see how I was going to make Mona's hat, and you said yes. So here you go. I made a digital pattern for this hat that is available for free on my Patreon. You don't have to be a patron to get it. You just have to promise to like this video. Or don't. I don't actually have a way of knowing if you did or not. Anyway, the brim. The brim is a few different layers. The top layer is a blue microsuede that I dip dyed for the purple gradient. Under that is a layer of felt, and at the bottom was going to be a layer of buckram attached to the red bridal satin, but... So I'm already starting out with a problem. Originally I was going to make the structure out of buckram, and I ordered some, but it was on back order and wasn't going to come until October 31st. And then I ordered some from Amazon and I got stolen from my package room. So I went to Joann's. Uh, this isn't buckram, this is some Pelion, and hopefully it'll work. The only problem is that this only measures 20 inches and the hat pattern measures 26 inches. So I'm going to have to cut two semicircles and sew them together and hopefully the seam won't be very visible. I'm gonna put the seam allowance on the top side, so it shouldn't be, but not a good start. So now that I have my two halves, uh, this is fusible and I am gonna be using the fusible side on the red side. Because it's fusible and because I have to combine them, I'm actually going to sew them fusible side to fusible side so that my seam allowance is up on the top. So now, because I don't want to press this, because I don't want to activate like the fusible part of it, I'm going to hold it open and straight stitch on top to hold the seam flat. So now that I have this, I'm going to mark a couple of different things. A friend of mine on Instagram, Helen Alice Sews, she did one of the Sakizo witches, and for that hat, she used darts to create the curve of the brim of the hat. And I want to try to do that. Now you might be thinking, why are you not cutting the cutout out? Well, I'm going to do that at the very, very end when I have all the pieces already sewn together. Mostly because I don't know how it's going to go and I don't trust myself to cut all the pieces individually and have them actually match up correctly. So I'm going to cut all this out and then I'm going to use butt stitching to get or should I attach the red first? Yeah, I think I'm going to cut this out, put the red on it, and then do the darts together. We'll see. I changed the plan already. I'm gonna add some bias strips to this because I think I'm going to put some like bones here to keep them, to help keep them up. So this is flat steel boning. It might, it might be hoop boning, I'm not actually sure. no idea how to make it not do that. If I wasn't wearing glasses, I would say wear safety glasses for this. Be safer than me. Here's my problem. I put it down the way I want it. It does this. I put it the opposite way. It does this. My thought is if I go ahead and put the red on and press it, Maybe the pressing process will get the curve out of this interfacing because it is still curved because it was curved in the store for so long. And if that does not work, maybe the darts will help. We'll see. But also, I can bend these bones, so I might just not do the darts. So I'm going to go ahead and put the red on this. So this is the red. This is a dull bridal satin from Big Z Fabrics. The instructions for this interfacing say to put the fabric over that and then iron over that. So I'm going to do that. And my iron does have steam, which was part of the instructions. Like, my iron has steam, and it said to use steam. It doesn't turn the steam on the iron on. You can see, you can see this seam, but I don't mind this. I'm doing it for fun. So if it's not perfect and I'm okay with it, then it's fine because it's my cosplay. Plus, uh, the pattern is gonna go right here. So a little bit of a distraction technique. I just don't want any bubbles. The last time I made a witch hat, it was for Shiny Chariot. And I actually did that in EVA foam as a base because that's kind of all I knew how to use back then. But what I did wrong was I didn't attach the bottom layer to the EVA foam properly. 
and like after I had sewn them together, I tried to glue them together by like sticking my hand in there from the brim. Didn't work, there were blue streaks. This interfacing is already a lot more sort of structurally feeling than EVA foam. We'll see. For the design on the underside of the hat, I decided to use fabric paint, so I traced the stencil that I cut from my pattern and painted it on. For the stars on the top side, I cut them out of the same gold spandex I've been using for all of her details. Normally, I would fuse them to the fabric with heat and blonde, but because the spandex melts pretty easily, I'm actually just using tacky glue. Do I recommend that you use tacky glue? Not really, but it is non-toxic and I was out of liquid stitch and because after this step I'm top stitching the stars down, the strength of the glue doesn't actually matter. By the time I had all the stars on, my fabric paint was dry so I could give it an iron to secure it. So now I have all these layers. We have the red, with the interfacing and then inside is a layer of purple felt and then on top we have the blue. I just clipped them together and we're gonna run them through the machine. I'm gonna do, you won't see this stitch, but I am gonna do blue on the top and red on the bottom just in case I miss part of the binding. So far I'm really happy with it. I especially think the blue layer looks really nice, and I think the felt underneath the blue also gives it this, I don't know, it looks expensive on the top. I am a little disappointed in this situation, obviously, if you're making this, actually wait for buckram. But I am happy with the strength of the interfacing in terms of how it's making the hat sit. It's just a shame it wasn't the right width. So now that I have these top stitched in, I'm gonna do the scary part of cutting this part out. Mona has this gold strip on the outside of her hat, so for that, I'm making some bias tape. Bias tape is made when you cut strips of fabric on a 45 degree angle. So fabric has a weave, right? The fibers parallel to the salvage are called the grain, and the fibers perpendicular are called the cross grain. Bias literally just refers to the angle, but it's important because it's where those fibers are crossing, which gives it some stretch. And when you pull the bias on almost any fabric, you'll notice that stretch. This is why we use bias tape for curved seams. That extra stretch makes even non-stretch fabrics able to curve. So once I had my strips, I took out my bias tape maker, which is just this little thing that helps you do the folds. The spandex again will melt if it takes direct heat from the iron, so that's why I'm using a pressing cloth. If you've never attached binding before, it's actually pretty simple. You just need to unfold the strip on the top side of your fabric, right sides together, and straight stitch it down. Then you can just fold it to the underside, and there's a couple different ways to secure the bottom. So what I decided to do is a stitch called a blind stitch, and sometimes it's called an invisible stitch. All you do is you go in through the binding without going to the other side, and then you let it sort of fold over, and wherever that thread wants to be hitting, you go through the hat, and it folds over like that. Go through the hat. So the last thing I did to the brim was I added wire to the inside opening. I absolutely do not recommend that you use this thick of a gauge of wire, and if you do, please sew it in by hand. You can see I ended up just doing this with the hand wheel, which was miserable. This did add a lot of structure to the hat, so I'm glad I put it in, but I used something like 10 gauge wire and you could totally get away with using a higher gauge, like 14 or 16. 
For the top of the hat, normally you would use buckram again and make a cone, but because Mona has a slouchy hat, I'm just attaching the fashion fabrics directly to felt. This will give it a little bit of structure while also allowing it to slouch. The purple for this is a polyester velvet and I just attached both fabrics by top stitching them right on the felt because the gold curve will cover the raw edges. For the gold details, I cut them out in line with the pattern and then using a sewing gauge, I drew the same line a half inch on top and bottom. And then I cut it out backwards. <sighs> Why am I like this? So I did it again. I glued it down with tacky glue and then top stitched it in place. Finally, I added the small stars and a little gold cone to the top. The last step for the top was the small strip of gold at the bottom, which I did in another bias strip, this time stitching down only the bottom fold. The only thing left to do was attach the top to the brim. Most of the time when you make a witch hat, the cone and the brim are the same size, so you can attach them with like a whip stitch. But Mona has such a wide cone, the head hole is much smaller, so I used a blind stitch again to attach the top. I will be covering the brooches and the beveled stars in another video, so subscribe if you want to see that. But with the cone attached, the hat was done. It. that's Mona's hat. I really wanted to make this a video because hats aren't quite as hard as they might seem and even if you buy a Mona cosplay you might want to make a bigger hat. I will hopefully be making more videos. I know it's been a while but I do plan on making Sanganomi at Kokomi and filming most of it so subscribe if you want to see that. Thanks for watching.